Hey there, I am here with Nick Buckholtz, weapon designer of the Blades on Bloodsport. I am Seth Schaefer, I am one of the main mechanical engineers and CNC fabricator on the team. Bloodsport's team is called Team Bots and Stuff Robotics, and I also happen to be on a separate team by myself called Team Just Cause Robotics. You might see a Just Cause Robotics logo on the robot, that's because I'm actually sponsoring the team this year, but uh, Nick, myself, Justin, and the rest of the people who build Bloodsport are all under team bots and stuff. So let's talk about how we as a team prepared Bloodsport for this season. Um, I know that Nick, you put a ton of work into developing new weapons and other weapon related systems for the bot this year. And we also built an entirely new Bloodsport as Justin talked about in the actual episode. So. Let's talk a bit about how we tried to improve the bot so that we didn't have a repeat of our Minotaur fight. Yeah, so last year the Minotaur fight obviously didn't go very well for us. Um, the experimental weapon we tried last year, that sandwich bar, uh, just could not take the, the forces that Minotaur could dish out. So this year we simplified. Um, so instead of you know crazy assembly weapon, we just went with you know solid chunk of steel. Um, and we brought back, uh, longtime fans might remember the, the key design, uh, just trying to get as much bite as possible, avoid that vertical hit, deliver a horizontal hit to them, um, and really bring some offense into the game, because that was something against Minotaur. We never actually really hit them. They, it was all them hitting us, so we wanted to be able to hit back uh, anytime we face a drum or a vert this year. You talked about having this really thick, chonky blade. I know that Nick also created a blade video you can find on our YouTube channel, so I'll link that below and also maybe a card above. Uh, make sure to check that out so that you can see exactly what went into making this new weapon. We have to obviously talk about the actual Copperhead fight now, and let's talk about that absolutely devastating one hit that happened in this fight. When we looked at Copperhead's drum and uh, the damage on both robots, uh, what happened was their drum caught the underside of our bar while it was kind of, you know, moving through the front of their robot and guided our bar up into their own upright. Um, so both bots delivered a lot of energy into the other one. Um, you can see actually in, in the hit, our blade stops, which means we achieve full energy transfer mm -hmm. out of the weapon. And that just sends both bots flying in opposite directions. And then that vertical hit sends us flipping away. Um, crazy hit. Here's a good picture. You can see the robot on the scale. We weighed in at 244 before this fight. Um, this is our configuration that we like to use for vertical spinners. So we got the four flex slits on the front and we've got our chonky weapon on. You can see the E-box back here. So this piece, not the ISO grid pattern below it because that's an aluminum part, but just this, this piece right above that was SLS 3D printed Nylon 11 um, that was done on a Formlabs Fuse SLS printer. The reason we were using this was we were just really low on time preparing this robot for the event in the last few weeks. And we basically spent all of our time trying to get our weapon system working reliably the way we wanted to. And we didn't really have time to make a bunch of mechanical changes in addition to that. So. We just kind of hoped that this would work out for us, and unfortunately we had the mother of all tests of uh, how it could handle impacts in this fight, and the answer was it cannot. <laughs> yeah, you can actually see in the footage, um, just again, like the pull, just the acceleration of the hit broke it. All of those cracks at the bottom, there's a bunch of bolts that are threaded through it, so the top half of it kind of main, mainly stays in one piece, at least until we hit the wall. But you can see like that entire top half just completely separated um, from the bottom half in this picture here. And then you can kind of see how it's like dislodged even just the moment after the hit there. Um, and then of course when we hit the wall... Speed controllers do not like being outside of the robot. No, they um... really don't. <laughs> So they, they let us know <laughs> with a flame signal. This is the aftermath of the fight. So you can see that box cracked all along here in like classic brittle failure faction. And uh, one of the speed controllers, there's just soot everywhere from it exploding and burning up all the plastic around it. H what happened to Copperhead? So it might not look like we did anything to them, but there's actually like two key bits of damage that Copperhead suffered. Uh, number one, 
is this ear, which is basically just part of this entire side panel. This is like an inch thick solid AR500 side panel, and it's bent at like like a 20 degree angle from that impact on the ear. So there were actually two two uh, impacts weapon to weapon. So one kind of there on the back of their drum, and the other on their tooth, um, as as they kind of guided us up into that ear. And then you can see on the ear itself, we we delivered uh, mm. a huge right. impact on on the tip of that. My God. Yeah. So they had welded in this like split ring to support the shaft on both sides of their frame. And it was so distorted after this that they said they basically can't use this half of their frame anymore. Wow. Mega, mega. And it's a welded frame, so they had to cut that out of the robot. Was there, or, was there a split mm -hmm. there before? Or we just uh, made that split. The other big functional thing that happened in the fight is because that rail was flexing so much, uh, their drive chain on that side actually popped off. Um, yeah. So they, they were not unscathed by any means. They were down uh, half their drive um, and had to reassemble half of their frame after that uh, hit. Yeah, so this was actually on the same side as the bent ear. So we accomplished our goal of being able to hit back in those exchanges and, and do some damage back to a drum bot, which was neat. And uh, the bar itself held up to that hit a lot better than the sandwich did to Minotaur. Um, mm -hmm. We did have some wear on the tooth, which is what we were fearful of with just an AR-500 bar. And the bar did bend ever so slightly. You can see on the floor there, uh, it's about half an inch higher on the tooth side than the other side. but it would have still spun and it would have still hit and we could have continued the fight if, uh, you know, we hadn't exploded our head. So uh, as far as the bar goes, this is a definite improvement over mm -hmm. uh, previous seasons. Uh, probably the best performance we've ever had of the bar taking that, that nightmare hit from bottom. We didn't have an intact head on it anymore was the, was the main issue. So yeah, you can see here what exactly the speed controller looks like after flames jet out of it for 30 seconds. All of this got so nasty and hot and, and just messed up by the fire that obviously it was completely unusable. This obviously made us very sad to come in with a new robot and immediately just have the... Because the head is like, you know, we've been working on trying to make this head more durable and, and uh, have it hold up to everything and really make the weapon hit hard and spin up really well. Um, yeah. And then to run into this immediate problem that you can't really test for before a match um was was pretty heartbreaking for us but uh obviously yeah. the main structure of it is aluminum and then that sls nylon part just didn't hold up so we had to try to figure out a, a way to make that be a different material uh at filming <laughs> yep and that's something that we will cover in a future video which because uh one of our well lovely sponsors pro labs really helped us out and came in clutch with helping us make a replacement part for that in the middle of the season so Keep an eye out for that coming up. I'd also like to say one thing. Uh, you can see in the side view, you see a small gear, big gear. Big gear obviously coupled to the weapon. Small gear is a weapon motor. Uh, one thing that Chris and Kenny said that was a little bit misleading though, is that we have a big motor. We actually have two motors. Unfortunately, since we were upside down and we had no self riding pole with one motor working, there was just no way we were going back onto our wheels though. You can see the bar actually twitched because Andrew figured, you know, what the heck, I'll give it a try, but yeah. So before we go, Nick, any closing thoughts? Yeah, so this obviously not the intro to the season that we wanted with the new Bloodsport, not the debut that we were looking for. Even amongst the carnage, there are a few, you know, silver lining. Um, we gave almost as well as we got as far as the damage went, and that's might be the biggest hit that we've ever had with Bloodsport. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously uh, encouraging signs and also disappointing signs from this fight. Yeah, I mean, I think that was almost undoubtedly the biggest hit that Bloodsport has taken. And then and then the transfer, it might also be one of the biggest hits we've ever given at the same time. Full transfer into Copperhead's solid AR500 frame. Mm -hmm. um, that That's gonna be a crazy, crazy impact. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to to tell just from the slow-mo, but like when a blade is spinning really fast and then all of a sudden it's not spinning at all, it that's just not stops. because the blade isn't powerful. That's because all of the energy went into Copperhead's frame. It's because we had that super efficient energy transfer of having the single tooth weapon that we were able to do that. And that was, you know, all 
credit to Nick for doing this single tooth bar that was able to efficiently deliver all of that energy. It's just unfortunate that, you know, we get thrown the other way when that happens, and if we can't get back on our wheels afterwards, then, you know, it's not quite as good as we would like. <laughs> Yeah, so lots of stuff to work on, lots of learning from this fight for sure. Um, Chris and Kenny, I remember them saying in, in the episode, like, not a lot you can learn from a fight that that's that's that short. Uh, yeah, yeah, we learned we learned plenty. Oh, we learned so much. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, honestly, I think that was one of the most incorrect statements made during this whole episode. We learned a hell of a lot. First of all, SLS nylon not going to work, and we needed to pivot. Number two. We found out that even if one of our speed controllers explodes, the other one is still operational, which is good because it means that all of the new electric electrical system within Bloodsport was working as intended. Um, and we found out that even with such a massive hit to our blade, like everything else in the blade stack was pretty much fine. And like gears were fine, the bearings were fine, the shaft was fine, and the head we had that one piece shatter, of course, which was bad, but um the aluminum part that we had to actually hold the motors and everything that held up fine the motors themselves weren't damaged so it was still somewhat encouraging that the biggest hit Bloodsport's ever taken we had like one plastic part break and that was pretty much the extent of the damage other than our drive chain falling off and the self-rider and the self-rider yeah <laughs> Speaking of coming in clutch, I'd love to thank our sponsor Arc Plaz who helped make the parts for our clutches this year. We had some custom titanium parts wire EDM'd by Arc Plaz, as well as our gears wire EDM'd on the motors and on the actual bot's weapons made by them too, plus a couple other aluminum parts on the bot. So check out Arc Plaz if you need any wire EDM or machining work done in the near future. All right, I guess that's all I've got for today. Thank you very much, Nick, for coming on to talk. And I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you for our future fight recaps moving through the season. All right, so this is Bloodsport's full fight schedule. So make sure to tune in for our next fight against Gigabyte on February 16th. You will also see us fighting Rotator on March 30th. And then finally Beta in the fight nights on April 20th. The best possible date for a fight. And of course, uh, that is all just to seed us into the tournament, so if we do well enough in those four fights, you will see us continuing to fight in the round of 32. So make sure to tune in for all of that, and follow us along on our future videos. It's been Seth Schaefer and Nick Buckholtz. Thank you for watching.